You know, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world, or outside the Christian groups. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. Well, I think that if you're going to have abortion, free abortion as some are advocating, that why don't you wait till the baby's born and then kill it mm -hmm. uh, yeah. rather than uh, have the, the mother's health impaired by the abortion. Well this was a different thought you see and uh, of course I do believe in abortion uh, for those who've been raped uh, for those who uh, may be diseased to the point that the child will be affected. I think there are certain areas that we need some of our laws brought up to date. Before his death and before the internet became really what it is now where everyone has access to basically everything you've ever said in public, um, sometimes your emails, Billy Graham was a Christian icon. However, when you hear some of the things that he said, the things that he said about abortion and then the things uh, about anyone, basically if they're looking, can become a Christian, even those who don't know or have not professed Christ, you start to wonder and question his doctrine, his theology, and some have even also gone as far as even question, is this man even a believer and is he in heaven now? I won't get into that. I won't say uh, whether I believe he is, whether I believe he isn't. And folks have asked me, why haven't I said anything really about Billy Graham? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I do respect and honor what he's done in terms of going out into the mission fields and spreading the gospel. I'll say more about that in just a second. But the second thing, which kind of ties into the first thing, is that in doing so, when talking about Billy Graham, inevitably we're going to have to talk about ourselves. Here's why. We've got one job. That's it. Now, while we're doing that one job, there's other things that we're going to do, but our main job is to spread the gospel. Some in different arenas, but whatever it is that you're doing, be it if you are literally spreading the gospel, if you're out on the street corners passing out tracts, if you're just talking to a neighbor, talking to a family member, or or a school member, a schoolmate, a classmate, somebody, people that you come in contact with, someone at work, our job is to let people know about the goodness of Jesus. When we come across someone who's struggling, having, having some difficulties in life, our job is to let them know about Jesus. The Bible said, tells us that the Holy Spirit in us is going to compel us to testify of Him. As a matter of fact, we're also told that because of love for Him and the terror of the Lord, it compels us to share the gospel. We're called light and we're called salt. A light is not hidden under a basket and if salt loses its taste, salt has one job, to season. And to even use another analogy, when you have something salty, when you eat something salty, it makes you thirsty. So as believers, we should cause people to thirst for the Lord, right? But do, are we doing that? Are we not are we neglecting our singular duty as a believer? Jesus says it this way. If we as salt lose our saltiness, he says we're no good. We're, we are good for nothing. And basically should be thrown out and just trampled underfoot by men. Now, that's Jesus saying that. And so when someone says, what do you think about Billy Graham? Well, what I can say about Billy Graham, regardless of how bad his theology is, regardless of how off his understanding of scripture seemed to be and the issue with abortion is also troubling, regardless of that, Billy Graham was still faithful enough to want to preach the gospel. I don't know if he's going to find himself in heaven or not. I know this though, 
there are a lot of people that because of his work will find themselves in heaven. And so if we're going to look at Billy Graham and, and, and discuss his off theology and doctrinal issues, yet he still spread the gospel, what are we going to have to say about ourselves? If we say that we have a better understanding of, of doctrine and theology, but we're now spreading the gospel, well, what's our problem? We can't complain about him on this end, not understanding the gospel, but he understood it enough to spread it, and us saying that we understand the gospel and not telling anyone, just kind of really spend more time either talking about each other or just talking to each other, but never talking to someone who doesn't know him. So really, if we're at home keeping count, score one for Billy Graham in terms of bringing people to Christ. The one job that we have been left to do, the job, the ministry that he's given us, this, this entire ministry of reconciliation, we are to reconcile people to God. And when we don't do it, when we'd rather talk about someone who was doing it, and again, I'm not making a defense of any sort for Billy Graham's bad theology. The issue that I'm talking about is when it comes to doing our job, Paul puts it this way. He says, there are some people who preach Christ for the right reasons, and then there are some people who preach him for the wrong reasons, for the wrong motives. But ultimately, what does he, how does he summarize it? He says, nevertheless, at least Christ be preached. So the issue is Christ being preached, and are we doing so? And so if some folks want to label Billy Graham as a heretic, fine. But did that heretic outdo you in terms of preaching the gospel? If someone wants to say that he is a, a fallen man, well, fine. Did that fallen man outdo you in terms of preaching the gospel? If someone wants to know that Billy Graham can't spell doctrine or theology, then fine. Then that biblically illiterate man, did he outdo you in sharing the gospel? That's our only issue. You got one job. Guys, we got one job. I say this myself to myself. Remind myself. There are times where... I don't feel like sharing the gospel. I don't feel like letting someone know who's going through. I'm just being honest. I don't feel like uh, sharing the goodness of the Lord because right now I'm kind of in my own little world. I'm worrying about myself. Hey man, I'm trying to pump my own gas. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Can you can you bother somebody else? Right. That's kind of the take that we have on somebody. But maybe 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 if we got enough passion, enough love about ourselves, about God, and wanting to share Him. The things that we complain about so much, maybe they wouldn't even exist. Maybe if we did our job, then we wouldn't have we wouldn't have a lot of the issues that we have. Because again, does not the gospel heal and solve a lot of these problems? So rather than worrying about what I think about Billy Graham and about his doctrinal issues and theology, and no, I don't believe that people who just good Muslims or, or good Buddhists are going to heaven. I don't believe that at all. But rather than worrying about him, I'm worried about the people who've never heard the gospel, who I can reach with the gospel. Amen.